Hi everyone, welcome to the 2021 digital conference of GovHack. So before we start, I'd like to do a welcome to country. Let's pause to reflect on the fact that we reside on lands of the world's oldest living organization. I pay my respects to the peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation, the traditional custodians of the lands where I am live streaming this event from. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands from where you are all watching and all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples participating in GovHack. I pay my respects to elders past and present and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters of Australia. So tonight we, we're joined by Michelle, Jim and Hugh from the Australian Bureau of Statistics and they'll be talking to us about unleashing the power of data through the ABS Data API. Take it away, Michelle and Hugh. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michelle Filo. I work in the API team of the Australian Bureau of Statistics with my colleagues Hugh Stelic and Jim Dentrinas. Today, we'll give you a quick intro on what, it, what is the ABS Data API and how to access it. Then we'll put theory into practice by giving you a demonstration of the ABS Data API and where to get more information. Lastly, we will open the forum for questions from YouTube audience. What is application programming interface? Without getting technical, API is a way for service to talk. It sends your request and brings back the answer for your request like a middleman. The ABS Data API gives you access to data from several ABS publications like the census data for 2011 and 2016, data by region with a range of data for various regions across Australia, including local government areas, statistical area level two, and other larger geographies. We have data available on a range of themes, including people, economy, industry, labor, environment, and health. We are also working on including data from the household impacts of COVID-19 survey. But how does it all work in practice? To access the data in ABS Data API, you need an endpoint. This service only responds to a single GET method. api.data.abs.gov.au is our base URL. It offers two modes of operation. Data discovery, when users need to discover the data and metadata available. And data retrieval, when users know the data they want to access. The discovery mode is what you use to find data flows. For example, API data ABS cover you slash data flow will list all available data flows. The retrieval mode is what you use to get the data. For example, API data ABS gov AU slash data will return data. Once you know your API request or call, you can customize it by adding a data flow identifier and the data key. For example, the URL you see on the screen with a string of codes at the end. That way you can customize your call to return only the data and metadata you are interested in, in the format you want. Let's explore call customization. And for that, we have to get a bit more technical. First step to customize your call is to find your data flow. All data in the ABS API comes out of a data flow, which is a type of STMX structure. Data flow ID is the equivalent of an ABS publication. By visiting api.data.abs.gov.au slash data flow, we get to see a list of all the data sets the ABS has to offer. There are a lot of them, but I show you a snippet of what I got when I searched for CPI. You can also search for consumer price index as we should have labels for all data flows. You need to provide a data flow identifier so the API knows which data flow to get the data from and a data key to filter the data we get back. But what do they mean? A data flow identifier is the agency ID plus a data flow ID plus a version. We only have ABS data, so ABS is the agency ID. From the metadata request we made on the previous slide, we know that the data flow ID CPI and the version is 1.0.0. .0. 
Therefore, our data flow identifier should be ABS comma CPI comma 1.0.0. But I like to leave it blank because leaving it blank will always return the latest version. So I don't have to worry about any versions changes. The last piece of the puzzle is the data key. The data key section of the URL let us tell the API that we only want a subset of the available data, a piece of the pie. We do that by providing the values we want from each dimension separated by a full stop character. And how do we find those values? Firstly, we need to know what order the dimensions appear in the data flow, because that's the order we need to put them in the data key. Again, we retrieve the data from the our base URL plus a parameter to get structure information. We will use the references parameter, which let us retrieve not just a specified structure from the API, but some of the structures it references as well. We're going to speci specify the value code list telling the API that we want to retrieve code list and use the URL on the screen to get this XML. I collapse some of the code to make it easier to visualize. This gives us the data structure with dimensions. The order of dimensions is given by their position. From the retrieve XML, we have an idea of the dimensions. Measure, index, time series, estimate, region, and frequency are the dimensions you can see on screen. For example, measure is a dimension and its order is one. So it goes first, then index, then time series estimate, and so forth. Okay. Now that we know the order, how do we find the actual codes for the dimensions? On the same data structure code that we used before, you will find the code list. Each of the dimensions in our data flows is represented by a code list. A code list will list the codes. You can do a search for the code list. As you can see, I found the codes for measure, uh, which is the first dimension we needed for our data key. This part of the XML is hard to show in one screen. So under measures, I collapsed the code ID number one, which was index numbers. <clears throat> and I left code ID number two, which is percentage change from previous period. Look at all the code lists. I decided I want the following values. For measure, measure I picked percentage change from previous period. And that is code number two. In the index, 10001 is the code for all groups CPI. In the time series estimate, 10 is the code for original. In the region dimension, 50 is the code for Australia, eight capital cities. Frequency is Q um, for quarterly. By now, it should be clear that my call has requested quarterly CPI data for original all groups CPI percentage change from previous period. You can also add a time period parameter. If you leave it blank, you get all time periods, but I added 2021 start period, so I will only get 2021 data. On that note, you can, even, you, could, you can go even further in your customization by adding a response format. You can specify the call response by using the format parameter as shown in these examples. <clears throat> data is available in XML, JSON, and CSV. And if no format is selected, the API will return XML format. Metadata is available in XML and JSON formats. ABS data API is fully compliant with the Statistical Data and Metadata Exchange 2.1 information model. The SDMX REST guide is available on GitHub. This is what our API call looks like if you look at it in a browser. Sometimes you might get an error. There are the most common causes of how to deal with them. Request return too much data or took too long. Firstly, make sure your compression is enabled. Compression reduce, reduces API response size significantly. Secondly, request that the uh, requests that take longer than 30 seconds are still cached by our system. A, a subsequently identical request may return a response. If you're still getting an error, then you will need to break your data into smaller chunks. The simplest way to do this is using the start period and end period parameters, or use the data key to cover a specific dimension. 
Next, request URL to log. The maximum allowed length of the data key section of the URL is 5,000 um, characters. As a workaround, we recommend using wildcards, which means leaving that dimension blank to receive all data rather than specifying the code for each dimension in the URL. Uh, the last issue you might encounter is structure not available. A request they use to return data or structures now returns an error. The most likely cause is an incorrect version number, and that is why we recommend not including version numbers in your URL requests. That way you always get the latest version. And now, without further ado, Q will give us a demonstration of how to use the API. Take it away. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, bear with me one moment. Alrighty. So what I'm showing here is our API user documentation for the ABS data API. Uh, this is available right now if you go to api.gov.au um, and we'll also link to this from our hackerspace on the GovHack website. So we really recommend coming here to learn more about this API if you're interested in using this as part of your GovHack project. Um, there's a lot of information on the user guide about how to uh, call the API, how to interpret your results, um, how to understand the statistical data and metadata exchange format. And there's some worked examples that go through some of what I'm about to show you in a bit more detail and, and step-by-step, as well as more information on um, troubleshooting some of those errors that Michelle mentioned. So if you come to this website uh, and scroll down, you'll get the try it out button. And if we click on that, it takes us through to our Swagger user interface, which is a great tool for testing out the API, um, generating API calls and kind of working out how to get back some data before you maybe plug that into um, another system or um, application that you're working with. So to quickly show you a couple of API calls, um, I'll start by doing the uh, data structure call that Michelle showed. So we can click try it out here and we'll request all data structures available in the API. Uh, the agency ID will always be ABS. Um, so it's only ABS data available in this service at the moment. And the detail query parameter in this case will set to all stubs, which is a term in SDMX to mean uh, just the high level information. It doesn't include any of the detail. And if we hit execute, that will generate our request URL. So this is our API call here. And it also generates a response body, which is our, our data response, our metadata that we've requested. We can also uh, choose our response content type. As Michelle mentioned, uh, metadata is available in XML and JSON. And so we can return the same information in JSON format which uh, we know many people prefer. So now to jump ahead to looking at a few data requests. So the data flow that I'll look at today is residential dwellings. And we'll look at um, some, some information about house prices in capital cities. So the data flow identifier for residential dwellings is res underscore dwell. Um, which we could have found on that list we were looking at before. And data key at the moment, I'll put in all, which will return all data. Uh, you can also leave that blank and to return all data. And start period, I'll enter 2020. And if we come down and execute this request, we'll get back our JSON data response. Uh, now, SDMX JSON format is uh, a bit unusual in how it breaks up uh, its observations, um, which are the, the actual numbers, which are here, and the metadata that describes what those numbers mean, which, yeah, certainly it makes it a little larger. Uh, so the observations are, are here, and the metadata that describes those observations um, 
further down the response. Um, but the, uh, the explanation for how to interpret that format, as I said, is on the uh, user documentation. So we've looked at an all data request, which is quite a large response, but let's look a bit more at the data key and how to request some specific data. So the same way that Michelle described around looking up our codes, um, we can enter here our data key um, to request some, some data for just a specific series. So our we have three dimensions in this data set. The first dimension is uh, our measure dimension, which has um, values such as median house price index, uh, and that code is three. So that's what we'll put in. Our second dimension is our region dimension, and we'll put in one G SID for Greater Sydney. And our final dimension is frequency, and we'll put Q for quarterly. Uh, and I will request this in uh, structure specific XML, which is nice and easy to read. So you can see here, we've got our, our API call has been generated for this data request. And you can also see the header here. It's um, generating a, our accept header to specify this response format. And here we have our data response. So there's a few things that um, we can view here. So we get to see the time series that we've requested because we've only selected one member from each dimension. Um, we're just seeing one time series here. Um, data from 2020 onwards to the latest available data. Um, the, uh, the data is described with codes and you need to look up the code lists for this data structure to get the detail of what those codes mean. Um, but there are a couple of key things here to help describe this data. So we have a unit of measure, which is Australian dollars. So all of these numbers are given in Australian dollars. We also have a unit multiplier, which is three. So that means that these numbers are given in thousands, or essentially you need to add three zeros on the end. Um, so that is a pretty important um, bit of metadata to know um, for interpreting this data. We also have an observation status for some of these numbers, which again uh, is described in the code lists. Um, but uh, you see a code here for R, which means revised, and P, which means preliminary. So this is um, a kind of simple data series. And just quickly, I'll customize our data key a little bit further to show a couple of options that we have here. So we can use the plus symbol to request multiple codes for a dimension. Uh, so I'll request to GMEL for Greater Melbourne. And I'll change our response type to CSV. So again, we've got our new API call here and we can see our response is now in CSV format and we're getting back data for Greater Sydney and Greater Melbourne. So we can compare what the average house price was for those two cities over the last year or so. Um, and you can see here in the first quarter of, actually the, the last quarter of 2020, um, the median house price for Sydney tipped over $1 million there. Um, so we can also, as Michelle mentioned, use a wildcard. So if we remove all codes for the region dimension, then that will request all, uh, all available regions. So if we execute that again, we now get all of our regions. So regional New South Wales, Greater Darwin, etc. cetera. Uh, we can see all of our regions returned now. So, before I finish up the demo, um, a couple other things to mention. So we have um, this user interface is built off the Swagger, which is an open API kind of um, documentation format. So you can download the Swagger file that kind of sits behind this interface, and that will give you a file that you can then load into um, a whole bunch of open source API testing and um, kind of uh, 
you know, tools that are available. So things like the SOAP UI tool or Postman um, will allow you to import this Swagger file um, and kind of help you to get started. We also have uh, the download client code option where you can um, select language uh, that you're interested in or that you might be using to develop in and automatically download some code that will um, kind of help you jumpstart uh, calling our API um, in that language or using that application. Uh, so I'll leave my demonstra uh, demonstration there and hand back to Michelle. Thank you. Let's go back to my presentation. All right, I hope you, thank you very much, uh, Hugh. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I did. <laughs> um, just a couple more points um, before we finished and open up to the questions. Uh, if you have any questions about the ABS Data API, access the user guide on api.gov.au slash APIs and click on the ABS, ABS Data API builder link. You can also ask for help and provide feedback through the API community of practice on the community.digital.gov.au slash C slash API. Uh, before we go, just a fine print. Um, this beta release allows you to preview the ABS Data API service before it is released in its final form and gives you the opportunity to provide the ABS with feedback as we work to enhance the service. We will continue to load new data sets and update existing data sets as soon as possible after embargo is lifted. However, data in this beta release may not necessarily be the most up-to-date. For the most up-to-date information, visit the ABS website. Availability of the ABS data API beta is not guaranteed. The service may be subject to change as we are always improving and upgrading our systems. Now, let's see if we have any questions in the chat. Uh, Jim, feel free to unmute if you wanna contribute with any answers. Yes, we have a question about how frequently are the data sets updated? Or is it just based on census data? Yeah, I can take that question. So all of the census data is loaded in as is, so that's not updated. Um, it might be revised if there's corrections, but generally speaking, um, we have, as Michelle mentioned, data for 2011 census and data for 2016. And the next census, which I'll, I'll get in a plug for, that's that's next week, so fill your census form in. Um, when the data for the 2021 census is published, uh, we'll also make it available through the ABS Data API. Um, that'll be uh, next year. Um, but we also, as Michelle mentioned, have quite a lot of economic publications available as well. So we have a lot of the ABS's um, statistics around uh, describing the Australian economy, um, our consumer price index that measures inflation um, and things like that. Uh, so those publications are updated every month or every quarter, depending on the frequency. Um, and we're aiming to release as close as possible to, um, to when the new data is made available. Um, but uh, there may be slight delays while we're kind of still in a beta service um, for this API. Just one of those extra ones that you'd add into there would be estimated resident population, which is comes out quarterly, and that will give more up-to-date population numbers um, at the SA2 and above level uh, that people may be using. Um, apart from that, there are a few quite good comments in the chat. Thanks, guys. I see the compliments. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other questions? There's a bit of lag as well, so it might take a while for them to hear us saying. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. There's a new one. Do you want to read that one, Jim? Yeah, it says also, what is the ABS commitment to publishing open gov data as fair? findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Do you want me to take this one here? 
Sure. It's um, the ABS mission. One of the ABS core values is access for all. So that's why we are making the beta available to everyone. And you can provide feedback on what you think the data looks like, if it's findable, accessible. Um, and especially, um, as you can see, our website had a lot of changes in the last few years for accessibility. So please give us feedback and let us know if we're not doing something right. Yep. We're also working to launch a user interface to sit over this API that will be um, uh, web content accessibility guideline um, compliant. So we're looking to yeah, have that avenue available in terms of accessibility as well. Um, we're always uh, open to feedback in terms of whether we're hitting the mark in, you know, with, with the data that we make available in these, these channels. So yeah, always happy to hear feedback where we're not, um, not making it fully accessible or, uh, or findable or, or there's something we could do better as well. Next question is, is the last updated date available through the API? Last updated? Um, I don't believe so. Um, you can see the most recent um, frequency that has been published. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, last updated, I don't believe so. Perhaps we can take that on notice. Um, would the last n equals one in the API call give a latest value? And that may suffice for the moment. What is the latest? Um, it's important to note that the API doesn't live by itself. You should always check the publication um, on the ABS website to find more information. For example, we have all our methodology in the ABS website. So definitely don't just use the data without checking. Um, what's in the publication as well. And that will have your latest date. Latest published date, not latest, la last modified. <laughs> we'll look into that one. Great questions. So question there, is there a way for the client to control the response size in order to not exceed the 10 megabyte limit, um, like pagination? Um, the short answer is no. Um, that, uh, yeah, that um, there isn't, uh, isn't that easy way to do that, unfortunately. Um, we're, we're looking into that limitation because we know it's something people will come across um, in, in terms of using this service. Um, but the, as Michelle mentioned, the easiest way to, um, to manage uh, that limitation is to subset your data queries. So to you know, request data for each region separately, things like that, um, to, to um, subset your request and get a smaller slice of data and then um, uh, get the full data set if you if you want all data by by kind of combining those responses. Uh, a question: Do we need any credentials to access the API? Um, getting an error type network error when attempting to fetch resource. Um, so there is anonymous access allowed for this API. Um, if people are kind of um, setting up an application that they want to kind of use over the long term, then we'd recommend they get in touch and we can register you with an API key. And that gets you, um, uh, it doesn't get you preferential access, but it does allow us to kind of understand who you are and it, and it um, 
helps with managing your access. Um, but in terms of people's use during GovHack, we're encouraging people to, to just go ahead and call the API without authentication. Um, the network error is perhaps something to post about on the community practice with your call um, and the error you're getting, and we can look into that for you. I think the question is relating to car ownership in the census and a content. We'll have to probably get back to you. Um, if you can contact the, the ABS, it will be easier for us to, to find the information because we don't know everything about content. Yeah, it's not available. Currently not available. Any other questions? Don't think there's any other questions there. All right, last call for questions well. for the chat. Last one. Thanks. And um, after. Um, Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. So, yeah, once again, um, a plug for our community of practice. If there are other questions that come up or if you're watching this, uh, this video at a later date and you want to ask a question um, please jump over there um, and uh, you can find that at api.gov.au slash community um, and we'll get back to you there and also we'll be available through the hacker space as well we'll be online over the GovHack weekend so you can search us out and ask all your questions there as well Yeah, each time series is different depending on what we're looking at. Uh, some of it, CPI and things go right back to the 40s, 1940s forward. Um, some of the latest data is just um, last few periods. Depends on the data set. Um, yeah, I can't really say more than that. Each data set will have a start period and an end period. Um, in the future, there may be first end and last end in an API call to give you some indication of when the time series starts and when it finishes. But we're looking at still developing things. It will change over a period of time, the API and how we store our data, what metadata is available. Um, it's still being developed is our main takeaway from some of that when you're asking those questions. That's it from me. <laughs> Good one, Jim. <laughs>